your goals right now are to win six games and make it to a bowl game um, and then build on that. Um, if you ask the players, they're going to tell you they want to win the whole thing. Um, but, you know, that's – their mentality is always going to be that. But, um, you know, I think they're on the right track and they're putting it, the, the puzzle together and, and it's just taking a little bit longer than, than they imagined it would when they got here. So, And the players should think that. They yeah. should be have the mindset that every time they take the field, meaning in week three or week four, whatever it is against Oklahoma, that they're no better than we are. We both put our shoulder pads on and we're ready to go and we've got 11 on the field just like they do. And then we're all flesh and blood. Let's go beat them. They're just guys just like us. And that's how they should uh, approach it. You know, in building the program, of course, the coaching staff and the head coach in particular has something else in the back of his mind, knowing talent evaluation and thinking, okay, this is where we are. And um, there's no reason not to believe, you know, there is not a juggernaut heavyweight elite Alabama, Ohio State in that division that even though I agree with you, six wins and a bowl against this schedule, especially yeah. six wins in a bowl appearance would be a solid improvement. No question about it. But in the next couple of years, the way this program's recruited top 25 talent mm. that Iowa, Wisconsin should be in sight. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and Nebraska has always kind of held that, uh, that edge on on any of those neighbors uh, that we have here, um, you know, Nebraska still remains, uh, no matter, despite their record and their coach, they usually do have a top 25 recruiting class. And, you know, the thing is that a lot of it hasn't weeded out um, or, or, you know, just it, they've had to weed out a lot of the, the guys that didn't fit in. Um, and you see a lot of that, uh, like, just about like uh, recruiting the state of Florida when they first got here, that was heavy, heavy what they did. And unfortunately, none of those guys have really panned out. And I think it's something like some crazy, like 90% or 85% of the recruits from the state of Florida are not with the program anymore. Um, but then you turn, turn that around and you look at uh, some of the states like Georgia and Texas and California, and most of those guys are still on, on the team. So uh, it's kind of a weird little correlation there, but, um, you know, and I think Nebraska has really started to find a diamond in the rough out of the state of Georgia. So, um, you know, I think right now, like we're saying, you know, if they can get six wins and make a bowl game, get those extra practices, um, now you're moving forward. Um, and it's kind of funny that we haven't had to answer that uh, Coach Frost on the hot seat question yet. And, you know, we're <laughs> about 45 minutes into it here and, that's a um, record. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, you know, you, you see that progress. And then I think uh, a lot of those those uh, questions start going away and, and people start seeing uh, light at the end of the tunnel to get things back to respectability um, because you've got a fan base that, you know, is probably the most passionate fan base out there. Uh, you know, I don't want to take anything away from any other fan bases, but um, – you know, it's a proud and a passionate fan base that uh, is used to being, you know, right up there at the top of the heap year in and year out. That it's it's been 20 years since uh, that's that's happened, and you know they're hungry. They're hungry around here. Just a couple quick notes before we hit our next uh, question here. Uh, a few minutes ago, when you mentioned the. Um transition from the Big 12 to the Big 10, Bo Pelini, that period of time. Again, I was just astonished at the time to see this Nebraska team that had played in two consecutive Big 12 championships, played a Texas team that went and played in the BCS championship game against Alabama at the Rose Bowl and take them down to the final second of the game, hold that scoring offense that was crazy good with Colt McCoy down to basically 10 points before they kicked a field goal with mm, one second or maybe negative one second left on the clock. That good of a defense. And of course, and Sue yep. was the headliner. And then the one that played Oklahoma within a field goal in the big 12 championship that there was this uh, Nebraska roster that could barely squeeze any offense out of a rock. It was like that, 
difficult, that painful sometimes, but just had this stellar stifling defense that was one of the best in the country. Then it, it was like they, it was like a different roster showed up in big 10 play. It was like they flipped a switch and suddenly they're, they're ringing up 400, 500 yards of total offense and all sorts of points, but they couldn't stop anybody. It was just strange. Yeah. It was. I mean, cause you always, Nebraska was always known for defense and running the ball. And when you join the Big Ten, I don't understand why those two things went away. It's it's mind-boggling because um, you still, like we just mentioned, you still recruit at a high level even though you switched conferences. Um, then you're, you're looking at recruiting a different type of player, but you're still recruiting at a high level. Um, you get you get defense. I mean, you get a guy like Ndamukong Su, my God, was, you know, damn near won the Heisman Trophy as a defensive tackle. Um Probably should have won the Heisman Trophy. Um, and then, you know, guys like Levante David, I mean, he's he's one of the best in the business, you know, making a living there in Tampa Bay. Um, and then you even bring in like a Randy Gregory who comes right in and, and makes a big-time difference a, a, as a, a pass rusher. And, um, yeah, it's just, it, it's just bizarre that it, it – I'm not sure if it was coaching. I mean, it, it's hard to say pinpoint why – the sudden change and to think that that what you've been doing for years isn't going to work, and especially because you're going to more a, more of a physical conference, you know, that you're going from somewhere where you dominated running the ball, but, yeah, it, it really makes no sense um, when it seems like that that same formula should be working in the Big Ten. And, um, yeah, it, it's hard to, hard to even put it – Nail on the head on that one. I don't know. <laughs> then the other thing I had to look up when you were talking about dominant running backs and when was the last time Nebraska had that kind of guy, uh, Amir Abdullah was the first guy that came to mind for me. And I just looked up his 2014 season. Good Lord. I knew it was going to be eye popping. I'd forgotten 1600 yards, 22 catches, 22 touchdowns. Oh, and yeah. he was good. Well, yeah. And, and you know, he, he had to wait his turn. He was behind Rex Burkhead. Um, you know, who's, who's won a Super Bowl ring there in New England. Um, and uh, that recruiting class actually w was, was funny, uh, Amir's recruiting class. Um, that was the first year that I moved back um, to Lincoln. So I was still in Nashville when uh, I interviewed him at the uh, Alabama-Mississippi All-Star Game. Um, that he was participating in because uh, he was an Alabama kid, and uh, he hadn't even ha didn't even have a Nebraska offer at the time when I interviewed him. Um, and then a couple weeks after that game, he got a, a Nebraska offer, and um, most people wanted him to play corner, and uh, he wanted to play running back. And, and Bo Pelini said, "Hell yeah, you come here and play running back." And uh, he was like the third running back in that class because he was behind Braylon Hurd and Aaron Green. Um, both had both moved on because Amir Abdullah made them both look silly. Um, you know, Aaron Green ended up at uh, what, TCU, I think, and and Bird yeah. ended up at uh, Kentucky, um, and, and both played you know a lot of meaningful football for those two schools. So yeah, you know Amir just kind of came in, and, and I don't know if it was just something that they had saw in him. Um, and, uh, you know, because he was like, when I saw him play in that high school all-star game, he was playing running back, but he was also doing a lot of, like, Wandale Robinson type things as well. Um, but, yeah, he really, I mean, he took Lincoln by storm and uh, really put together a great career and, uh, you know, has, has been in the NFL to this day. So, yeah, yeah. Three huge seasons, especially the final two, were just ridiculous. Oh, yeah. It was so funny, too, when – uh, the first practice of that of his freshman year, I say, "Hey, Mirror, how you doing?" He's like, "What are you doing here?" I'm like, "I'm following you around, man." <laughs> so it was pretty funny. <laughs> he said you live down in Alabama somewhere, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Menon's on the line. I just don't know what to think about the ceiling of this particular team every spring. We are told that this is the year. Yeah, that's what we hear every year. <laughs> and I think I think we just covered pretty much what we think the ceiling of this team is. Um, yep. You know, winning six games, that's got to be your goal right now is winning six games. Um, you know, 
I would be more worried about the floor question than the ceiling. Um, you know, if you wind up with only three wins, four wins, uh, that's not good. That's that's not showing any kind of improvement. And um, but you never know if you know what happens if Nebraska goes into Auburn, Oklahoma, and has a fantastic defense and uh, shuts down the Sooners, and all of a sudden Nebraska wins that game and it's four zero, and and all of a sudden has some swagger to them, and and uh, maybe that makes a difference. But uh, you know. We're just we're, we're dreaming big right now for that, but um, you know, getting that bowl game that's that's you got you got to figure that that's right there that that's the key that's what you got to do and um, and then think about maybe the ceiling for this team next year.